Hey folks, welcome back to Douglas Garage. Now tonight I want to do a caliper rebuild on the front of the bandit. I've got a bit of a problem. Recently you'll see on the videos I changed the front pads. Just a quick change to show you they're done. And one of the calipers is playing up. One of the four pistons in that caliper is sticking. Now this is quite common. It's not dirty, it's just sticking. And sometimes it's caused by suction, sometimes it can be caused by a bad seal or some dirt in there somehow, but I'm going to pull it apart, I'm going to put some new seals in it, I'm going to make it work properly. Now I recently did a rear caliper rebuild and that's been very successful. A lot of you guys are getting yourselves into it for the first time. Pulling a brake caliper apart and pulling all the seals out of it and rebuilding it is pretty scary for the novice mechanic. It really is a very simple job. I want to make this point very clear, as I always do. It isn't rocket science. It isn't surgery. It isn't complicated mathematics, it's just bolts and spanners and wrenches. It's very, very simple. And it is something that we can all do. And it's just knowing the anatomy of the part, what's inside it, how it comes apart and how it goes back together, that is the key to all of it. And that's what I'm hoping to do. I'm hoping to bring that to you. I'm going to do this in two parts. We're going to do one part of ripping it off the bike, stripping it all apart, cleaning it. We're going to do a second part, rebuilding it, putting it all back on. And hopefully when we're finished it should work a bit better than it does now. Okay, so stick around, stay tuned. This is part one. Okay, what we did, we put two sets of pads in the front. There are four piston Nissin caliper, and they're very, very common. They're on about 20 different bikes. Most Suzuki's use them, some Kawasaki's use them. They're very common, so this will suit many jack bike riders. And obviously the other side of it as well is, even if you own a Harley Davidson, the anatomy of a caliper, an opposing brake piston caliper, is very straightforward. Even if it's a Harley Davidson, it's the same principle. So what I'm going to do, this is show you first of all the problem. It's this left side that the problem comes. The wheel is binding, so it's it's not spinning around freely, and that's dangerous in wet weather and, and, and frosty cold weather because effectively it's like riding up the road with a little bit of brake on all the time, and that wouldn't be sensible in a corner. Now what I'm going to do is with this torch, I just want to show you on the edge here, there's four pistons, and they come at the disc at the same time in an ideal world. But sometimes what you get is one on this side at the back isn't doing any work. And effectively you end up, the disc itself, because the discs are semi-floating, they move. And that's in order to allow them to boogie around and set exactly so you get crisp, sharp, quicker braking in corners. And what happens when you get the two coming together at each other and it works against the disc, that's correct. But when one of them sits still and the other three are doing the work, you find that the, the disc is getting flexed and that's what's happening here. If I show you this, I'm going to pump the lever up here. Just watch the edge of the disc. Now very carefully, if I show you here on this bobbin, you can just see as we click and pump the lever, there's a little tiny bit of movement. And that's being caused because here in the caliper, the inside piston at the back is stuck. So we need to get the caliper off, break it into two halves, get to that piston and all the other three as well and put a new set of seals in them and clean them up. So the first job, let's get it in the daylight and we see that the caliper itself, we're going to get the pads out first of all and then get it off the bike or get it off the bike first, get the pads out, get it on the bench. However, before we do that, we're going to use a bit of common sense here. I love mechanical common sense, you know me, that's how it works. Now, the caliper has four bolts, one there, two, three, four. Now these four bolts here, they hold the actual two halves of the caliper together. They are the main central bolts that hold it and they're very tight. Now there's no use taking the caliper off, then take it to the bench and realising you've got no way of holding it. That pistol or that caliper is not designed to be held in a vice. If you try and clamp that in a vice you're going to damage it, you're going to clamp lumps out of it. It's only aluminium and that's soft. So while it's still clamped to the bike we're going to get a big uh, Allen wrench and I'm going to undo those, I'm going to crack them off, so that's the first job. Okay, these fasteners, very simply, this is the pin that holds the pads. Now I've just cracked that, and this is the other important one. Now I want you to go and buy one of these boys, this is very important, it's a 6mm Allen wrench or Allen socket. If you get these kind, they're okay and they're great and that's fine, but they're not very precise, they're good for little pins like that. But 6mm on a Japanese bike is extremely ubiquitous. You use it for all kinds of things. Certainly on this, it's also used up here for the pinch bolts on the on the clamps or the triple trees. It even holds the engine in. Even the engine mounts here are a six mil. So it's worth investing in that. One of those is about 25 pounds. You probably pay about $30 for one in a decent tool store. 
it's a very wise purchase. Now what we're going to do with these is fit that in nice and firmly and before we're not going to actually take this apart all I'm going to do is crack them and it's called cracking or you say you're going to crack them that's the term you use because it's obvious listen you just crack them you break their grip on the thread don't turn them anymore I mean there it is if we go down we're at six o'clock that one wasn't cracked but there we are we've only gone to say what is what is that 25 past 5. So, so effectively, they're now cracked, and that's fine. The other thing we're going to crack is the banjo, and then we're going to take the caliper off. Okay, the banjo itself, I want to make another point with all of these. Just crack it, because we're going to need that sealed. Now, next, next job is to take the caliper off and take the pads out. When you take a caliper off, I think we went over this when we did the pad change. Pretty straightforward. Nice and loose. If you rotate the caliper, just give it a little wiggle, you'll push the pads back. So if you just do that with the caliper, get hold of it. Gently, don't lean on it. Just a little bit and it'll give. That's it, just a bit. And that makes it loose. And it just comes off. And now we're just going to take the brake pads out and that's one of these okay now any bike might have slightly different anatomy but what I want to do is make this a bit generic there's our pads take those out now here is a four pistons and they all pump at the same time you wish but as you can see look look at this one here it ain't having it this one's resisting a little bit as well. And they're dirty, you can see this crap on here. So the idea is if you hold that one in, and hold that one in, it's a bit of a two-handed job. There we go. They start to come out together. And just push them out by pumping the brake lever. Don't push them right out. The only reason you're doing this is because what you need is a, is a little bit of piston to grab with the tool and pull them out in a minute when we take it in half. Now, you can see there's conclusive proof that what's happening is that one there is sticking. It's not coming out so that these are pushing too far that way and you're getting a binding break. What I do is pop a little pin between them so they don't pop out and then keep pumping to get those other two out. There we are. There we are. That's good. Okay, so what we've done with that is just pump the pistons out a little bit. Not by any more than that. You don't want them to pop right out altogether. And then we're going to take it off the bike. At this point, we take a bungee or a shock cord. <laughs> Here you go, bungee. Take the banjo off. Now, before you take the banjo off and all the oil pours out, or the brake fluid just pours out, do some common sense. Lift it up like this, put a curve in it so that gravity doesn't allow it all to just pour out. Now it's going to be a bit messy this job, period. Okay, so then just take, if you let that go down now, the, the brake fluid will come out. So just pop a little hook through that, and hook it up on the bars there. So quite simply, that oil, all the brake fluid there, isn't going to just pour out. And we have our caliper ready to put on the bench, let's go. Okay, caliper's on the bench. Remember what we've done, we've cracked these four bolts here, so they should be quite loose now. Actually, nice and free. Now, clean surface, can't stress enough. Always use a clean surface because you can see if any little parts go anywhere and you don't get any dirt or bits of swarf. When you work in your garage like I do with metal filings and all sorts of things, you don't want it going in your brakes. Now holding it together with your hand, take the bolts out, okay, finally. Now the two halves just come apart, and there we are. Now when you take a brake caliper apart, brake caliper doesn't have anything interlocking. It is just flat surfaces. 
and I want to take trouble here. There's a little rubber seal there. So I want to make sure that that's not being disturbed and it's not damaged. When you buy a seal kit, you don't get these rubber seals here. You only get these main seals, which are for the pistons themselves. You can buy these seals, but you very rarely need them. I've done dozens of these things. Never needed them. Okay, so next task is to get the pistons out because we need to put the seals inside. And a trick for that, obviously if you grab a, one of those pistons with a pair of pliers and pull it out, you're going to put bite marks from the jaws of your tool on the pistons and then they'll be damaged. So, simple trick, a bit of common sense, use an old inner tube. And a strong knife. <laughs> I'm not allowed sharp knives. <laughs> okay. And the idea of this is fold it over, fold it over again, and you've got a nice rubber seal or a nice rubber soft edge. Okay. And you grab hold of the piston with a rotating motion pull it out. Okay, don't put a metal tool on that metal piston for any reason. Ah. You see it's a messy old task because inside each one is that quantity of fluid that pushes the back of the piston. Okay, next one. If you rotate them as you pull, they'll come out fine. There we are. one. Okay, so that's got our laughing parts in half. Now let's do some cleaning. Right, from this point on it's just a case of housekeeping really. Cleanage, getting all the grit out, don't put water in there obviously. Just dry out all the fluid and reveal the seals. Now each of these pistons or cylinders as you're looking at now, each of them has two rubber rings in. They have a dust seal and a pressure seal. Now the pressure seal isn't square. When you put your finger in, the inner seal, the thicker one of the two, you can feel it. If you slide your finger inwards you can't feel it. But if you pull your finger out, as you draw it out you can feel it. And that's for a reason. I'm going to pause now and show you this. This is very important. In fact, I don't think there's anything more important than knowing this issue. It's getting the seals the right way around. Now, the seals only go one way around. If you were to cut a cross section through the seal, it's that shape. And the groove it goes in is like that. Now, obviously, the piston comes in this way and sits there. So as the fluid pushes up against here, it pushes that against the piston and makes a seal. If you do it the other way, you get them in upside down, all the fluid's going to do is push past, like a rim latch on a door. So when you look at your seal, it's that shape. Uh, oh, I know there's a mathematical nerd, a word for that, it'll come to me. Nerd. Nerd is the right word. And when you feel them, you can feel that lip edge on the inside. So we've got to get those old ones out first, and I'll show you. Now I've made a little rim, uh, a little seal pick. All it is is electrical screwdriver, and I've curved the end and smoothed it off. So the first thing to do is get inside and gradually get gently in there. It's only rubber, and take that seal out. And the inner seal. Is the big one. Try not to chew on the metal because obviously you will damage the caliper. Now that was in that way. So when we look at that, it's a smaller hole on the bottom than it is on the top. So it's important. If you get it in that way, 
quite simply, you're going to get what happened what happened to Brembo. Now, some years ago, this is a piece of history for you, some years ago, Brembo, the people who make Brembo calipers to go and do catties, they stopped making seal kits. They refused to sell seal kits to the public ever again. They've relented now and saw the error of their ways, but the view was that somebody in the States put a set of these in back to front, went up the road, crashed his bike and hurt himself, and decided to sue Brembo because it didn't say in the instructions, don't put them in back to front. I guess it didn't. But the guy was obviously a bit of a numpty and he put them in back to front. He didn't work it out. He didn't check first or ask anyone or look it up. And he ended up hurting himself because as soon as he applied the brakes, fluid just poured out everywhere and made a mess and, and he fell off his bike. So they said, right, no more seal kits. You can only buy complete brand new calipers. But that didn't work commercially for them, so they do them again now. So it shows that it can be done and it shows that historically it is a problem. You must make sure when you do anything on your bike, that you do it correctly. If you're going to get involved in brakes, it's not serious, it's not hard, it isn't scary, just take your time and think. Use a bit of brains, okay? They're a precious seal. I'm going to take the other ones out, get everything cleaned up, and that will be the end of part one. Okay, so there we are, that's the end of part one. That's the stripping of the caliper off the bike in a safe way, and that's getting it in, in two halves. Come and have a quick look in, clean everything up now. Um, got the inside of the calipers, Nice and clean, spotless. Got the seals, the pistons out. Cleaned all the pistons round. Important to clean them up. One thing I just want to mention, in the winter, this is a very important job because you will probably find that at some point your calipers will start to bind up. Um, the reason it happens is uh, mineralization, that's the word. It happens when you get salt on the roads that is mixed with the water. It's in a salt a water solution. It, it surrounds the brakes, it gets in amongst these dust seals, these little thin ones, these are dust seals, and it gets in behind the dust seal, the salt water, and then it dries. Obviously the, the brakes get hot, that evaporates all the water, but what does it do? It leaves the minerals, i.e. the salt, behind there, and it builds up, and gradually it just squeezes them out of their seat, and as they get squeezed out of their groove that they sit in, where are they going to go? Up against the piston, and it starts to bind. So cleaning all that out is very important. You might find every two to three years on a fast sports bike like a Hayabusa or a ZX12R or something like that, you're going to get that probably happen every two to three years. On a Harley Davidson, it may not happen at all. It depends what weather you're riding and how much you look after your bike and clean it. But if it happens, this is the remedy to it. So these are clean, the pistons are clean, the seals are ready. That's the end of part one. Join us for part two and we'll get the whole thing nailed back together. Cheers.